a very good morning to everyone today we are going to discuss a very very important topic already we saw how the csf is produced how it circulates in the central nervous system and how it drives today we are going to discuss what are the functions of the csf then we are going to see uh, uh, lumbar puncture uh, what are the structure we have to pierce in the lumbar puncture and what is the contraindication for the lumbar puncture. First, there are some important functions of the CSF. Functions of CSF, cerebrospinal fluid. First is the cushion function. It acts as a cushion to the central nervous system. Actually, in day to day, -to -day life, there, there is some movement of the central nervous system. So, the CSF acts as a cushion to the central nervous system and it protects the central nervous system from the damage. Second, buoyancy. What is mean by buoyancy? It is the floating tendency. Floating tendency. The CSF makes our brain to float. Actually, in dry air, in dry air, the weight of our brain, brain weight is about 1500 grams. It is 1.5 kg in dry air. Our, our brain is about 1500 grams, that is 1.5 kg. But due to its floating tendency, buoyancy, the brain is about 50 grams. When it floats in the CSF, the brain is about 50 grams it makes to it makes the brain to float then nourishment actually csf is present in our subarachnoid space and around the central nervous system there is the pia matter but pia matter is a thin layer but it it is no act it it does not act like a barrier to the central nervous system so the csf can easily goes easily goes into the brain so it can nourish our central nervous system the csf can nourish us our central nervous system likewise as the csf can cross the pia matter it enters the brain and spinal cord easily and mixed with the interstitial fluid in the brain and the spinal cord it also can remove the waste products which is produced by the neurons neurons in the central nervous system so it also have the function of removal of waste products from the interstitium at last control and the, it acts as a then CSF. What is the volume of CSF in central nervous system? It's about 130 ml. It's about 130 ml. Daily production of production of CSF is about 550 ml per day. What is the pressure of CSF? It is about 60. 60 ml of water. Now we are going to discuss about the lumbar puncture. What are the layers we have to pierce through? First, we have to do our lumbar puncture at the site of L3 lumbar 3 or 4. In between the lumbar 3 or 4 or L4 and L5. In between L4 or L5. Okay. What are the layers we have to pierce through? Actually, there are 10 layers. Now, I am going to tell you the layers. First is the skin. First is skin. Our first layer is skin. Then, this is our subcutaneous. Under the skin, there is subcutaneous fascia. Subcutaneous fascia. Third, this is the ligament. There are three ligaments. First is the, this is the spinous process of the L, L4 and L5. For example, this is the spinous process of lumbar 4 and 5. The uh, ligament which is above the spinous process, 
this ligament is this ligament is supraspinous above the spinous process so supraspinous ligament supraspinous ligament third is supraspinous ligament then in between the two spinous process one ligament is present that is the interspinous in between two spinous process the ligament present is called interspinous ligament for this interspinous interspinous ligament then after that a ligament present is called this one is called fifth one is ligament ligamentum flavum ligamentum flavum then the space in between the ligament the ligamentum flavum and this dura mater after the this is the dura mater the space is present between the ligamentum flavum and the dura mater is epidural space epidural space seven this i already told this is this layer is dura mater then in between the dura mater and the arachnoid mater is sub dural space then arachnoid mater this is the arachnoid mater at last sub arachnoid space this is the space where we have to take or csf this or the spaces uh, where we have to take or csf for the testing so what are, there are some contraindication to do the lumbar puncture one of the contraindication is increased intracranial pressure okay plus uh, there are some signs to like and like there is increased intracranial pressure first is headache this headache will present when already the patient wake up actually when the patient is sleeping when already the patient wake up the uh, patient feels headache okay then second is papilledema papilledema what is papilledema it is when we uh, when we see the patient eye through the ophthalmoscope ophthalmoscope the optic disc will be blurred for example this is the patient eye actually the optic optic disc will be clear in normal eye the optic disc will be clear the patient with increased intracranial pressure the optic disc will be blurred due to increased intracranial pressure then vomiting if the patient is having the history of vomiting the vo vomiting will be like projectile forceful vomiting projectile vomiting then fourth there is decreased pulse rate pulse and increased blood pressure this is due to increased intracranial pressure will stimulate the vagus vagus now okay so so and decrease the pulse rate actually vagus now is parasympathetic so irritation of the vagus now will decrease the pulse rate at the same time due to increased intracranial pressure the 
blood flow to the brain will be decreased for the compensation of the blood flow so our, our uh, sympathetic system will overflow so increased blood pressure will be there at the same time there will be decreased pulse due to increased intracranial pressure these are some important points related to the lumbar puncture okay that's all for today thank you